Hello, Tonga Law family and friends, and welcome to another episode of What's New in Immigration Law with attorney Christine Tungle Cabignot. Hello, everyone. Can you believe we are wrapping up summer and heading into fall 2020? Well, I hope you and yours are keeping safe and healthy amid this pandemic. On this quick immigration roundup, we bring to you the latest news in U.S. immigration. As an overview, topic one is close call, USCIS averts furlough of 13,000 employees. DACA update, what to do and expect. And some U.S. embassies actually resumed routine services, just very minimal routine services. Find out where to look for them and their updates. But first, let's take a look at how USCIS has averted a crisis. Um, 13,000 employees were involved. It was a close call and a deep sigh of relief for 13,000 U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services employees as the agency made a major save, averting their planned furlough. USCIS claimed to have accomplished this through massive spending cuts and steady increase in income and revenue. This is so promising to many who are awaiting final adjudications of their immigration petitions and applications. Hopefully, this means that there will be more movement in the backlogs and long wait of processing time. But still, Congress must act on a long-term solution, since this is just a Band-Aid, that will provide USCIS with necessary financial assistance to sustain the agency throughout fiscal year 2021 and beyond. On to our second topic, which is DACA, the hotly contested DACA, what to do and what to expect. Now, you might have remembered that the U.S. Supreme Court handed down a, an unprecedented and landmark decision um, that had to do with DACA, and this is the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Initiative. It was a setback to the Trump administration, but after that, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security has released a memo which basically gutted DACA after the setback because it was sent back to um, the administration to, to actually act on certain things that were not clear. Now, the Supreme Court had ruled on that decision uh, it, and it ruled that it did not accurately explain its decision to end DACA. So that's why the Supreme Court had volleyed it back to the administration and say, be clear in what you want to do. Well, they were clear in what they wanted to do with this July 28, 2020 memorandum, which totally falls short of a total rescission, which means they did not completely get rid of DACA, but it does some serious damage to the initiative and creates an uncertainty for hundreds of thousands of dreamers in the middle of the global COVID-19 pandemic. So, number one, all first-time DACA requests will be denied. Uh, initially, uh, first-time DACA applications stopped on August 23rd, 2018, after a lower court ruling in the case challenged the initiative. But after the Supreme Court's ruling on DACA, USCIS was permitted to resume accepting first-time applications. So this was really quite hopeful for many of those who had turned the majority age of 15, which is the minimum age requirement, to file for DACA. However, the July 28th memo has made it clear that it will prevent approximately 66,000 eligible DREAMers from being approved for DACA for the first time. Um, second, all DACA renewals will be adjudicated on a case-by-case -case basis, but if granted, will only provide for one-year renewals. Now, DACA adjudications were always handled on a case-by-case -case basis, so it is unclear how much of a change this element of the announcement will represent. But the shift from the two-year renewals of work permits and stays on deportation to one-year renewals makes the program much more costly and less attractive to applicants. It doubles the expense of applying, which is already high at $495 filing fee per application. Third, almost all advanced parole requests will be denied. Advanced parole permits a DACA recipient to travel abroad and re-enter the United States lawfully. This permission to travel had been essential for DREAMers to be able to visit with loved ones living in other countries. Although fewer people are flying internationally with COVID-19, the announced cessation of nearly all advanced paroles requests 
is frankly quite unnecessary and mean-spirited. So with all those three key factors, what's next for DACA? Well, parties in pending DACA lawsuits may seek to challenge the July 28th memo as unlawful in light of the Supreme Court's decision. But ultimately, the court's ruling did not reach the issue of the lawfulness of DACA. A likely worst case scenario of the administration's comprehensive review will eventually be a complete and total termination of DACA. In that case, approximately 640,000 active DACA recipients living in communities across America would lose the ability to live and work lawfully in the United States. The only way to avert this worst case scenario is if the Trump administration would work cohesively with Congress on a permanent legislative solution to make the DACA initiative permanent instead of totally dismantling it. Now on to our third topic, which is U.S. embassies around the world. Some U.S. embassies have resumed routine services, um, and this is only very few of them around the world. The majority, for the most part, are, the on, are only entertaining emergency appointments. U.S. Department of State is still unable to provide a specific date for when each embassy post will resume specific visa services or when each will return to processing at pre-COVID workload levels. For updates on the U.S. Embassy on a particular country, see each individual U.S. embassies. Also, you can go to www.usembassy.gov for the latest regarding the visa applications. Embassy or consulate's website for information regarding operating status and services, what it is off currently offering. Applicants with an urgent matter who need to travel immediately should follow the guidance provided on their nearest embassy or consulate's website to request an emergency appointment. So there you have it, our three top immigration issues. We hope you found the information helpful. Until next time, we wish you good health and sound spirit. Thank you for joining us on this latest episode of What's New in Immigration Law with attorney Christine tungle Cabignot and Tungle Law. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, and visit our website at www.tunglelaw.com.